Hello and welcome to Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. I'm Jules, your co-host. If you're new to this type of work, start with episode one. If you're an intermediate, start with episode 98. And if you are an advanced practitioner, go ahead and fast forward to episode 200. With me, as always, to share her insights and her wisdom is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Hey, Kelly, how are you today? Jules, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. We're we are trying to defrost. <laughs> you know, I keep forgetting that winter exists. I swear to God, yeah. I'm here in Panama and, and it's the same temperature this year round. I mean, we, we have dry season, we have rainy season, but there's, I, every time people talk to me about the, the cold, I'm like, right, it's freaking winter. Right. It's winter. I forgot. I keep forgetting. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, of course I live in Louisiana. So right. when it, it, when it get, dips down past like, you know, 30 degrees, the entire state shuts down. <laughs> so we have just been shut down for two days the state closed offices, the roads were closed, everything, because it got down to like 17 degrees. And we don't know how to drive. On, we, no, we, we, we are not equipped for this. So so everybody made the mad rush to Walmart and, you know, Winn-Dixie, get your food. Everybody's cooking all day. Um, thank goodness it wasn't as rainy as I thought it was going to be. So we didn't have a black ice yeah. and all. So, that, so we had electricity. Yay. So I just did a lot of cooking and did a little sewing and more cooking and more cooking and more cooking. So, yeah, that reminds me of when I was in high school in El Centro, California, which is in the Imperial Valley, which is next to Coachella. We used to beat the pants off of them every year in football. Um, and it was in the middle of the desert. So every time it rained, the school closed because it flooded. So we didn't get snow days. We got school. We got rain days. Rain days. So, you know, four days a year we would get closed because of flooding. So, which we didn't have go. to worry about mold growing because it was so dry the rest of the time. Nobody, it, no mold spores could survive. So we didn't have to worry about that at least. But yeah, that's, that's always the fun part. But yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything cool going on here. Oh, 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 I'm going to be, be in a show of Mamma Mia. Oh, way fun. Yeah, I'm going to be singing and I'm going to be playing the part of Donna, the main character in Mamma Mia here in Boquete. And, uh, and I'll be music directing to help people learn how to sing better and stuff. So um, I'm super excited because we did a whole episode on Mamma Mia about the mythology of mm -hmm. the, the movie and how, how it's all about an Aphrodite tale. And so we're going to be bringing that into the production. I had a conversation with one of the people about it today. So that was a lot of fun. So, so Cool. So when when do rehearsals start or when does the production? Oh, well, the production is going to be in September, October, which makes me which reminds me that the productions in September, October. So when I said that the retreat was going to be September, October, I'm insane. That's not going to happen. So the retreat is going to be like, uh, I think, the first week of December, which is actually better because the, the and for those who are coming in cold and didn't hear about the retreat before the retreat is um, uh, adventures in energetics. It's it's advanced energetics for people a little further along in the process and uh, it's going to be custom designed around the people who are coming but um, the the good news about moving it to early December means that it's going to be prime time for Bajareque which is a special kind of rain that we get here in Panama that causes amazing rainbows like the best most brightest most like in your face rainbows like my husband and I drove down a mountain chasing the bottom of a rainbow because it was so clear like i'm finding my pot of gold you know? no kidding right we were looking for the leprechaun baby um and so you know that so the beginning of december is actually prime time for that so it's it's actually a better time to be running it um and you know who doesn't need a nice panamanian break in between thanksgiving and christmas i don't know anybody who doesn't need that right there you go <laughs> There you go. Well, so, things anyway, always work out how they should. Absolutely. So, but we, we have a guest on the show with us today who has been patiently waiting for us to talk to her. Um, and, and, you know, I was on Janelle's uh, podcast to, well, YouTube channel podcast, right? Um, uh, I don't know. What was it like a month ago, month and a half ago, something like that? Yeah. Um, and, you know, her, her, her YouTube channel is called Table Talk. 
And we had a great time and we really connected and really enjoyed each other. And so I was like, come on to my podcast. I have to have you. We have to talk about things with you. And she was like, okay. And so, you know, here she is. And, and so uh, Janelle, uh, Janelle Warkentine, did I say that right? Yeah. Okay. Great. That's a tough right. name. All right. And so uh, she is an intuitive healer and she is an energy worker and she actually helps healers to find their gifts in the world, which I thought was amazing and so needed. So I wanted her to come on the show uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about her story and then we're going to talk about intuitive gifts and how do you raise your vibe and how did the how do your gifts and your vibe go together and all of that fun stuff. So that's our topic for today. But before we get into that, Janelle, tell us a little bit about you and how you got here because you've got quite the story. Yeah, thank you, Kelly. Love being here with you. I'm excited about your Panama event. You're talking to me about that. And I'm like just explaining this right now. And I'm like, okay, I like warm places in the winter. That's, sign me up. Okay, so awesome. we'll talk after the show. <laughs> we are talking after the show. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, about me. Um, so I was incredibly intuitive as a child, like many of us are. We don't realize it because it's such a natural space for us at that age, right? It's just what we're doing. We're playing, we're imagining, we're creating. I grew up in a world of animals. So I was, my family was um, with the Forest Service. Well, what that means is that you're in these remote places. So I'm in the mountains of Montana, Northern Idaho, and there's the bear, the cougar. I mean, that's like reality. Like it's kind of like for a lot of people, it's like so scary, but to me, it was such a normal thing. And hindsight, I was talking and interacting with my animal kingdom. And it was such a comfortable place for me. We had the horses, we had the rabbits, the dogs, the cats. I mean, that was such a natural place for me. The fast forward and I'm in school, I have an auditory processing disorder and I'm dyslexic, which now I see as a complete gift, but I did not see that at the time because everything within that world of words was confusion and not just confusion, but absolute just scared me to death. It was horrifying through the lens of a child because everybody got it. Why couldn't I? So I started because of that confusion, the overwhelm, it was my gifts showing up, but I didn't understand that. And nobody's talking about that, right? When we're at that age, at that time in my life. So I'm shutting this stuff down. So fast forward, I'm in a horse trainer, the horses, I'm attracting outlaws and the horses are starting to talk to me. And so as I'm picking up, wow, you're just in pain. Let's start working to get you out of pain. Networked with a vet gone Eastern medicine, a horse chiropractor and a body worker, which I now know is an, a healer, but we we're called them body workers at the time. And she's like, this is what we need to do. So we're getting the horses out of pain. The horses in turn start activating my gifts and I'm seeing into the body and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can see this. And the, the, yeah, the vet's like, well, that's a meridian. Well, oh my gosh, I can feel this. Oh, well, that's the energy stuck. And so my training 25 years ago started as the horses opened me up. So that's 25 years ago. Fast forward today, that's this just now been a, a world of studying and learning about how gifts work. How do they show up with people? That's for awesome. people. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. And so you are now working with healers Yes. And helping them identify their gifts. Yeah. So, so, you know, I can hear them asking, how do you do that? How do you do that? <laughs> how do you do that? I know it's so much fun, by the way. It's right. So much fun. It's like a playground, right? It's like, oh, let's go play. Yes. <laughs> so how do we do that? We really, it's very custom because we are so unique as an, you know, an individual, but we want to take, and we want to start, um, I, I put people in small groups and sometimes we bring the horses in virtually most of the time because people are from all over. So we can do that virtually and we invite the horses in and we say, okay, let's say 
what are you hearing? What are you feeling? What's the sensation? Because a lot of people that are already healers, and some of them are chiropractors, acupuncturists, therapists, you know, different types of healing. But what's showing up for you right now? And let's talk about that. And now let's start unpacking that. So let's get to know you as an individual, step one. Now let's start doing some work together and let's start seeing and interpreting. Really, I think, Kelly, I'm an interpreter. I think they come in knowing because I don't want to tell somebody this is what I want to be the facilitator. I want to be what's that saying? Okay, this is what it could be saying because what realms are you tapping into? What, you know, what energy are you tapping into, et cetera, et cetera. So just explaining that for people. And we get ideas that at least I have observed this, that, and I did it myself too. When somebody said, you know, you're psychic, I said, what? Oh. <laughs> I think we've all had that experience. <laughs> I don't know, wait, so I've seen way too many movies for that, right? Way <laughs> too many movies, please. So it's kind of unmystifying some of our limiting beliefs around that as well. Yeah, that that's, that's awesome. I mean, I've, one of the things that I talk to people in my spiritual coach certification about is that, you know, they're, they need to determine, you know, what, what is the core essence of the energy that you hold, right? Yeah. You, your, your purpose is the fullest expression of your authentic self. If you don't know who the authentic self is, then how do you know what your purpose is? Right. And, and oftentimes it's seen in reflection. I mean, it took me forever to come up with what mine was. I, it took me like 10 years of being like, I don't know, I, I do this and I do that and I do the other thing. I, I did what everybody does, which is list all the modalities that I did and all the things that I could do in the entire freaking toolbox that I have. Nobody cares about your freaking toolbox. They want to know what is the outcome that you provide, right? And I was like, eh, it's different for everybody. And I don't know. And, 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 you know, eventually I figured out that I was carrying the energy of change. Well, but that wasn't even accurate because I've come to understand in more recent years that it's the energy of transformation, which is different than the energy of change and words matter. It's important. And so, you know, uh, it took me uh, 20 years to come up with that. Right. <laughs> it's just like, Oh, well, I don't know. Right. And how do you, how do you say that? Right. So having somebody who can help to clarify that and really bring that into form is super helpful because it's so hard to come up with on your own. Um, it is. And, we're too close yeah. to it. Sometimes yeah. we're too close to it. And yeah. you know, when I look back at my journey work on that, cause I'm, I'm totally hearing you. It's like over the last 20 years, 25 years, I've been discovering what you're talking that. What is it? Well, I'm a person that creates balance. I, if you want to talk about my word, it's balance in my energy. And, and it's not even limited to that. And I really think, so I have two thoughts colliding in my head at the same time. Y'all okay. do that. We'll like do that two streams just came in oh, and went. Only two, only two. <laughs> well, that's the only two I caught. There might've been more. <laughs> No, none of us can relate to that. So the one stream that came in, it was, it was that, you know, we shut these things down as a protective technique. It's some, many of us do, not everybody, but we shut it down as a protective technique. Okay. No guilt, no shame. We're not going to shame that moment. It was for the time and that's okay. But now connecting to that, that's like one of the reasons why I think it's tricky to find that is because we did shut it down to protect us. So fear says, no. So we start to get close and it goes and sparkly object over there. Uh, you know, it starts diverting us different directions. So having that second set of eyes is huge. The other thing I think that's happening, excuse me, I think I'm having it. I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> but anyway, the, uh, <laughs> the other I thing I think cleared is earlier. So I understand. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So um, then the other thing is like, it's journey work. And it's like, we go through phases of discovery. They're building blocks. Do we, and I, um, how do we discover? And we discover these pieces. And that's just our part of our understanding. Do we need to know those, all those pieces to be the balance maker, to be the, what was your word? Transformation. 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 Energy. Yeah. No. But for some reason, there's these building blocks we go through to get us to that space, to get us clarity in that zone of our lives. Yeah. Well, and, you know, once you know, I mean, 
you can't sell transformation, right? Yeah. You know, oh, I, I mean, it's, it's, you know, people don't buy transformation, they buy the outcome, right? And so that even, even knowing what it is that your core energy is doesn't quite get you there all the time. So, but it is super helpful for knowing how you work with people, right? It's super yeah. helpful and it clears up. Did you notice this? It clears up when I finally got my word balanced. It cleared up so many things when I look in hindsight, like I'm like, oh, that's why that upset me. That's why I would be like all fluffed up, not know why I'm fluffing up. Like we had a rooster once, so farm girl here had a rooster. His name was Mr. Cluck when I was growing up. Big Mr. Cluck was a colorful fella in personality and in, in feathers. And if any, his gift was bounce. So the sheep would be all in a fuzz, whatever. And they're, they're going at each other out in the pasture. Mr. Cluck would march out there between them all. He's like, so small compared to them. Anyway, he doesn't care. In his world, he was huge. He goes marching out between those years, fluffs up in a big hullabaloo, fluff, 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 cluck, 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 and sends the girls to their corner. And he goes, okay, the world is fine now, and walks out. And I'm like, huh, that's like me. I'm like, isn't that, and then that was my word. And it just made so much sense in so many ways. And we're talking about a little bit of raise your vibration, understand yourself and raise your vibe. How much baggage in that simple piece of clarity I was able to let go of that. I didn't even realize at the moment I was hanging on to that. These things bury and we just, they're just so normal, I guess, right? And yep. we don't see them. So just that yeah. clarity. Yeah. It, it's so funny too, because sometimes it's, it's the awareness of our gifts and sometimes it's an awareness of a block, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Kathy and I used to talk all the time about how we grew up with this. It's not fair. It, it, it was like so big in our lives. This is not fair. It needs to be fair. It needs to be fair. And everybody around us, all our parents were all like, life isn't fair. Get over it. And we're like, but no, it needs to be fair. Right. And, <laughs> and I'm, you know, looking back on it, I've, I've recently ran across somebody who has labeled, you know, I've always said that there's this fear of your own power because you were killed in your for your gifts in a past life, right? That's that's one of the blocks that I run into. And he framed it differently. He called it a persecution wound. Mm -hmm. And I I was like, that's a really interesting way of framing it because when you look at it as a persecution, you know, wound where you're like, oh, it's not just I'm afraid I'm going to be killed. It's I'm afraid I'm going to be ridiculed. I'm afraid I'm going to be treated unfairly. I'm afraid that I'm going to be, you know, stoned and, you know, put down and humiliated and all the other pieces. Right. It's like, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Right. And that explains the it's not fair thing. Right. It yeah. explains that earlier in life. No, it has to be fair because it was a life or death thing, literally in a past life. And so, you know, sometimes these things, they, they just, you look back and you're like, oh, well, that makes so much sense. Right. And Absolutely. yeah. So let's talk about our intuitive gifts and how do you, how do you access your intuitive gifts and how, how do you raise your vibe? Let's, let's get your piece on this. I'm People have heard this from me, but I want them to get your perspective. By the way, guys, you need to be learning from a lot of different people because one person's perspective is great, but you're, you aren't me and you, you will take what you want from me and leave the rest. And that is as it should be. You know, every person who learns from any teacher takes what they need and leaves the rest. And so I, I, this is one of the reasons why we have people on the show who aren't me as to, to give you another perspective, because I really feel uh, strongly that you need to be learning from multiple people. So with that said, tell us how you raise your intuitive gifts and how to raise your vibe. I think they go together. So when we're shutting down this part of us, as we're growing up, we are also creating blocks and you touched on blocks. And I'm like, yes, it is. That's it. So raising our vibe and, and my graphic design team, bless them. I have such, I have a great team. And this one gal came up with this picture and it's a gal and it's about raising your vibration. And she's like, I can't even be that cool. It's just like the coolest picture. Ever. 
And um, and she's got the you know the the vibe um like you have design going off of her and it's great colors and you feel it and you just go whoa yeah let's bring that in that's good but what is keeping us from that feeling from the inside out because we can have a good time we can hang with friends we have things that raise our vibe but how do we be that from the inside out and it's actually I think step one is like whoa well, what's blocking me from it right what's blocking me from my gifts because the two are going together we have and we spend a lot of time and a lot of money. We spend 12 years in school working on our brain. We do physical exercise to help our body do what they do. You know, we even talk about nutrition, which is about our physical body and so on. But what about this side of us, this energy side of us? Well, what's that mean? That piece of us that feels and senses in depths that we're just now scratching the surface of what that looks like, what's that feel like, but it's joining the senses and it's coming in through our heart center, through our gut. And those are the bigger centers than, than our brain, right? The brain, the heart center is like how many times bigger? So what is it tapping into your intuitive side? It means you're taking your physical and your thought processes in your physical body and you're marrying it with your other half. It's your senses that senses are so much bigger than what we're picturing even. So that's the start of it. What's blocking us? When did I start blocking? So being very simple, Kelly, just thinking back when I was a child, I started blocking this because I wasn't fitting into a perceived normal. Go back and go, where was that perceived normal and where did it start? And how was I perceiving? And what kind of anger, what kind of shame, what kind of fear started there? And there's your blocks. Yeah. Then go, body, where am I holding that? So start, when I was training horses, then my first aha and why I knew they were in pain is because my gift in being dyslexic is when I see um, a vi oh, an animal moving. And I've been around horses my entire life. I have a video camera in my head and I've unknowingly to me, just this thing that happened. I have thousands of pictures of horses moving correctly based on their, how they're built. So I would free move these animals and I would place a picture over the other, the animal moving. And I went, Oh, so the correct animal would be moving like this or the healthy animal. And this animal, that shoulder's not moving correctly, that leg's not. So biomechanically, you're off. We're the same way. Right. So the horses had stuck energy. We have stuck energy. Biomechanically, you're going to look at yourself move and you're going to, oh, why do I do that? Well, that could probably possibly be somewhere you're holding on to something. And yeah. So, yeah. So once those are removed, then when those are removed, we're opening up a channel for those gifts to actually start flowing. It naturally happens. Now that rhythm is in your body. Now that energy of that gift who was designed to be the other half of you is now there. Now we're on the journey of raising our vibration because now we actually have harmony. We actually have all of us in, in motion now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I would say that, um, oh crap, there it was. And then it went, hold on. It was there. <laughs> um, there was something that you said, oh, uh, it was about, nope, I got nothing. <laughs> Don't you love that? I know. Go back to the room. Where did I leave that? I had a girlfriend say that to me. Yeah. She'll go to another room and she'll go, oh my gosh, I forgot what I was going to do when I got, when I got here. So she goes back and she goes, I'm going to go pick it back up again. So she goes to the room and she picks up the thought and she goes, it actually comes back to her. I said, yes, I love that picture. Go to the room and pick up that thought. Yeah, I I've done that, but I wasn't in another room. So I'm screwed today. But <laughs> Well, I have a question. What well, maybe it'll trigger what you were what you were nice. Thank you. thinking? Because you know sometimes that works. I had um, it, and then I lost it. Yeah. When when you're working through your blocks, and now I've identified, you know, oh, okay, I 
I hold my shoulders up. I'm making it up, but I like I do, but I hold my shoulders up, right? Mm-hmm. And so now, so now I want to clear that. Do you find that the ways I knew it, I knew it was going to happen. The yeah. ways of clearing that varies. The best way to clear that varies by person, or is there kind of a universal way to either let that energy go or clear that block? Good question. Um, there are some basic principles. If it's showing up for you and you just became aware of it, it wants to go. It's time to go. Um, When we're seeing something, just know if you're seeing it, feeling it, have a sense of it, it's on time. It's right on time. And I love to go in and let's say it's in your shoulders. That's one I do too. Um, Is I like to just, and it, if I'm guiding it, I'd be very, I'm very specific to the person because I'm looking at them and I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, it wants to do this, but it's there to teach you something. So I'll ask you, hmm, feel into okay. that if you're a feeler, or I would be like, okay, put your hands on it. If you're that kind of feeler, um, go look in the mirror. If you're a real strong visual, whatever. But then I would say, okay, do you have a sense? Is that yours? Because we carry stuff that's not even ours. And a lot of these things that we're letting go of aren't really ours. It may have been a fear I held on to, but there's a reason I interpreted that event as fear, which is a whole long topic, right? But but it could be somebody else's fear. But so I ask, is this yours? Do you feel like it's yours? Just go with what first comes. And sometimes I'll center people into their heart because their heart, we're not, we're so trained to be in our brains and bless our brains. They've got a job to do. Bless them. Thank you. But for you, for once, shut up, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Take <Yes>. five, right? <laughs> Sit down and shut up. The adults Sit, are talking. Yes. Yeah. Take a back. <laughs> yes. Just, just for now. <sighs> right. So. Just for now. Yeah. And as, and we get them into, we get into our hearts. And then when we say, okay, is that even mine? Well, yes or no. And then what would you like to have? Is this just ready to be let go of? And so we can wrap and there's different techniques and, but there's some, just some general ones where we can wrap it in love. And, and if I'm using my own love, here's a principle. If I'm using my own love often, it won't happen because I'm holding on to it anyway. Sometimes that can be a block I want. And I find it beneficial to channel or set the intention to bring in these per- persons have their different languages of their source energy, their higher self energy, but something of pure love source energy and bringing that love okay. in and let that wrap around it. And then where does it want to go? Doesn't want to go back in time. Doesn't want to go back into the highest love space to be clear. Doesn't want to go into the ground. Let it go. Don't get brainy about it. Just let it go and then fill back up with love again. Never leave a hole empty. So general principles that can get more complicated than that, because sometimes there's something to learn or know. Kelly brought up, you know, the past life stuff that sometimes is good to know because it's helping us understand something. And we need to understand that for different reasons. So in general, though, I find that love wrap is really useful and and successful. Thank you. I like that. The thing I finally remembered is... um, that sometimes the blocks are yours and sometimes they are cultural norms that you have taken on. Yeah. So for instance, I'm, I grew up a lot in the South and you don't want to be a bother. <laughs> I don't want to be a bother. You know, I don't, I don't, you, you don't, you're not too loud. You're not too much. You're not too, you know, seen as a woman. Right. And you know, it, that was a big thing is I don't want to bother people. Right. I don't, it, even, even if I'm singing and people tell me my voice is beautiful, I will still feel like if I'm singing in a place where singing isn't expected that I'm bothering people, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's a cultural norm that has been ingrained into my psyche, right? And so one of the things I had a theater teacher when I was in seventh grade, and one of the things that they had us do to get over that was they sent us out to a bus corner, bus stop, and had us stand on the corner with a friend and scream at the top of our lungs the color of the cars as they drove by. That'll get you out of your shell. Yeah. I still remember that exercise. That was seventh grade, people. Seventh grade. That was like 40 years ago. Okay. Oh my I still gosh. remember that exercise because it made me so uncomfortable, right? But it it did a couple of things. One is it it broke the the I don't want to be a bother thing because I bothered people, 
And for two is it got me and it got me in a place where, um, Oh crap. I am losing shit all over the place today. My brain just went, Nope. Uh, so it got me over that. And then it got me to, what was the other thing? There was, I, I got nothing. It's gone. Um, <sighs> but it was there. It was something else. There was, there was another benefit that it just went away. Move past the block and uh, did it, did it, in, did it get you into more intuitive? No. Um, it was, it was more about first I wasn't going to die. Right. Because you, you feel like you're going to be stoned to death by the people who are angry with you. If you're an empath and people get angry with yeah. you, you feel like you might die. Right. That happens when you're a child, especially if they get very angry with you. And I grew up with a rageaholic. So, you know, yeah, there was fear of death on a regular basis uh, up until I was about five years old when my parents split. But um, but the the piece of the puzzle that that came about was. Do I have it? Nope. I nope. It's not there. <laughs> I'll tell you when I think of it. We'll just keep moving. I got my brain is just being pulled away from all sorts of stuff today. I don't know what's going on, but I'm not allowed to talk. So I'm going to shut up and let Janelle talk. <laughs> it's it's so part of our journey though is identifying those things, is identifying and then re-accepting that. Okay. You were in that space. You you were a bother. I have that one too. You're a bother, and it's very likely that we are empaths many times as we travel to this earth in our past life adventures. And were we criticized, stoned, different kinds of tortures for using our voice for being a what now is translating as a bother? Absolutely, we were. So we're carrying that lens as well. We have our lens that we're currently looking through, but why are we even translating it that way? Why am I even picking up your bother? Well, because something happened, some sequences of ha things have happened. And today we get to shift that. That's the beauty of it. Today I get to identify, oh my gosh, that's a guilt shame lens. Beautiful. Thank you. There was a time I learned my lesson. These are lessons. You know, we look at this like, oh my gosh. And and I went through this when I was being, I've been gutted. I've had, I won't even go into the gory details. There's just been so many traumas based around this. Let's use your voice thing. Yeah. Um, and now and I lost my train of thought. And there's layers. So that's good. Cause I was just well, going to jump in. So, and there are layers of, of, and I'll jump in so you can remember yours. Cause mine didn't come back. And so there are layers of this, but one of the things that I, I run into all the time is that people are thinking that, Oh, well, you know, I did this work. I shouldn't have to do it again. It's like, no, no, no. Think of, think of your personal work yeah. and, and, and the issues that show up on it mm -hmm. as spokes on the spiral. Right. Yeah. So you're on the spiral, working your way into the center of the spiral and there are spokes coming out. And so on this level of the spoke, you're like, I'm a bother. Right. And then you come down a little bit more and you hit it again at a different level. And you're like, oh, I am afraid to perform. Oh, you know, I, I'll be criticized and, and, you know, whatever. And they come and, and, you know, I manifested something there, too. I had a teacher in, in high school who was like I was I was auditioning for a part uh, as Adelaide in Guys and Dolls. And she looked at me and said, come back when you learn how to sing, because I sang it as you can feed a roll day with the vitamin A and the bromo fizz. Right. And and she was just like, come back when you learn how to sing. And I was like, wow, that was really harsh to say to a, a freshman in high school. And I, I was like. Mm. And so, you know, I had, I worked for years to overcome that one piece of feedback and, uh, you know, but each time I hit it, I was like, nope, I'm going right through it. No, I'm going to go. No, I'm not going to let her stop me. Mm, screw her. Right. <laughs> I was like, I was just screw my anger to the sticking point until I could get past it. Right. I'm, um, and, and, you know, eventually I came to the point where I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Right. But a lot of it was done in rebellion against that term because you have a choice when somebody gives you feedback like that you can either take it in and what well, you have three choices you can let it go and that would have been more healthy but i was you know what whatever 13 right how many 13 year olds do you know can let the, something obnoxious like that go yeah i was i was evolved but not that evolved and so you know you can let it go or you can say fuck that and i'm gonna fight back against it because i'm not gonna let that run my life. 
and or you can let it run your life and shut you down and you know once you've shut down now it's a lot more work to get over it right because mm -hmm. you've got a in, a in a way we take that on as an identity right yeah. it's like oh no that's not me i don't do that right? right and when you take something on as an identity it's much harder to shift yeah exactly it is yeah, yeah so you know getting Getting our vibration and raising that vibration is like we're saying, it's about just the doing the journey work. What pieces resonate with you today and what's ready to heal? What's ready to be let go? What's ready to be understood? Being open to receive. And Kelly, I love this about your work. There's several things I love about your work. One of them though, is that you're saying, let me help you get over being addicted to healing. I love that. Because I, I really resonate with that. You, we do have healing work to do. We have discovery work to do. We have growing work to do. But honestly, we're whole. Yeah. We have lives to live too. Yes. We're whole. Yeah. yeah. And I have the answer here. I have the answer here. And yes, we have principles to learn. And there's wisdom out there to understand. But I have the power here. I have the knowledge. I have the wisdom. I have guidance. I am connected to my higher self. Do you want to raise your vibration? Get good at connecting to your higher self and saying, cause that higher self has been journeying for X amount of, we, it's not even measured in time in that space. Right? So <laughs> the, the higher self has been journeying. We came to the planet for a reason. There's a purpose. And that higher self knows it. They know our purpose work. They know what we're here for. They've got the direction. So tap into it. And yeah. it's that faith work now. Now you want to raise your vibration, all the things we've been discussing, absolutely. And then get can, that faith in yourself. Practice, say fuck you, and practice stepping out in who you are as a human, how you're designed to be. That's so powerful. And that raises your vibration. You can feel it when you say it and you feel it when you get that convicted about it. And you can feel it in your gut at that moment. Like I can feel it in my gut. I'm sweating, just thinking about it. But that's the power of it. That's the power of the connecting to that. And that's well, and I think a lot of in a lot of ways, when we think of the words raise your vibration, we feel like it's an active process in the moment yeah. of, oh, I've just got to pull my energy field up. And mm -hmm. yeah, can you do that short term? Yeah, you can do it short term, but it only lasts for short term and it takes a lot of energy to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. And the moment you stop paying attention to it, you're going to go right back to where you were. So when we say raise your vibration on here, what we're talking about is raising it permanently. Yeah. Right. And yep. the permanent raise, and you and I talked about this after our, our uh, time on your show, uh, you know, the, the, the end result is authenticity. The more you clear, the more clear you become. Mm -hmm. And therefore the more authentic you are and authenticity by definition is high vibe. Yeah. Because exactly you're in your authentic self. You're not being dragged down by the energies of the blocks and blocks are by definition, low vibe, right? Yeah, so are. if you think of yourself as an electrical circuit mm -hmm. and all of your blocks are resistors, then the more blocks you have, the less electricity runs through your circuit and therefore the lower your vibration overall. Mm -hmm. Every block you clear pulls the resistance out and now your circuit runs much faster. And so, and it's every so much block is, is progress, right? Exactly. And it's so much, so much less work. That's yeah. why we can hold it up for a moment, but we're going to bop back down to whatever static is, right? Whatever, wherever we're at in our journey at that time. Uh, but as that comes off that dirt, that everything that blocks come out of us, then it's just easy because why it's easy to be us. It's easy to be authentic because it's just who you are. So now that you are more energetic, you, what are the results? You are more at peace. You are in a, the things that we seek as humans, the things we're looking for, that peace, that inner joy, that purpose, that knowingness, it's all connected to being that authentic self. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and the more you are in your authentic self, the more of those resistors you pull out, the more energy you actually run. Yeah. And 
because you're running your own energy more efficiently all the time, your body learns to hold more of that energy. And as your body learns to hold more of that energy means you can channel more energy from the universe when you choose to open up and go woof, right? Um, You know, and the more you practice, the better you get. I mean, I remember sitting down a couple of years ago at this point at a retreat center and the retreat owner had asked me to uh, give feedback. He, he asked everybody in the group, he's like, this is the first time we're running this type of retreat and could you give us some feedback? And so I had some feedback and it wasn't positive. And so I wanted to not impact everybody else's experience. So I just threw a quick uh, circle up around us that was a don't notice me circle so that nobody else would notice that I was giving him feedback that wasn't positive because they didn't need to have that experience, right? I was just trying to be be mindful of the space. And I put up the circle and he went into full panic mode. And I was like, what's going on? Because he had, he felt the circle go up and it wasn't, the circle was not meant to cut him off from anything. It was not an aggressive circle. It was just simply a don't notice me, you know, kindness to everyone else. That's all it was. But he felt the circle go up and he felt it go up and he looked at me and went, holy crap, this woman just put a circle around me and didn't do anything. Right. I just intended the circle and it was there. Right. I, I didn't do anything. I just went thunk. And and I could see in that moment he was like, oh, shit, I'm screwed if she comes for me. <laughs> you know, it's like it was this weird thing that happened. And I'm sitting there and I'm going, wow, there's an assumption that he's making in that moment where I literally was offering him negative feedback as a gift. Right. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't have to give him feedback. I could have just left and said this sucked. Right. I didn't have to say what the problem was or how it could be fixed. And I was I was offering him a gift from my perspective. And, you know, here he is assuming that I'm on the attack because he went straight into defensive mode. And I was like, Ooh, OK, but that was an indicator of where he was yeah. in his beingness, right? Yeah. That he would interpret something as simple as a don't notice me to be an attack, mm-hmm. first off, yeah. which had nothing to do. I mean, literally, it was just a circle. It didn't do anything. Right. Um, right. But to to interpret it as an as, as a precursor to an attack or as an indicator of my ability to attack him, not that I wanted to, you know, all of these things. And so, you you know, when you have those blocks, you're going to make those assumptions and you're going to end up in situations that are not, they're going to end up being very different than they would have been if you didn't get into defensive posture, because I didn't give him the feedback in the way I was going to give it to him before, because he was not in a position to feel it, to receive it. Right. He was already in. Whoa. Right. And I was like, okay. So yeah. And that's the sort of thing that, that happens when we're, when we have a lot of blocks, right? It is. Yeah. The thing that happens is we get out of rhythm. So I was talking about, you got your first part, you got your body part and you got your energy part. And now they're not used to being together. There needs to be, there's a rhythm and the heart has, and the horses showed me this, bless them. And the vet, the vet of Eastern and of Eastern medicine, she goes, you can reset the body. So what we did is we put our hands on the heart and you just go, okay, where's the rhythm? And I find there's a dance within us. And I was speaking with a beautiful healer the other day and she goes, it's the dance. And I went, I have never thought of it like you're right. Like I got the rhythm thing, right? The rhythm. But I'm like, yeah, it's a dance within us. And it's like, get the rhythm back in your body. And it's like, you want to raise your vibe. You want to be connected at just another level. We can put our hands on our heart. We can go, okay, there's the rhythm. Nice. Brain, backseat. Don't think about it. There's the rhythm. Now invite the next level of you to join the rhythm. Just invite it. When you get the sense that it's there, Go down another hand width. Now I'm on my lower belly. Get the rhythm. And you can invite and you're actually helping merge through the Arcadian rhythm of our body, our energetic self and our physical self. And it's so simple, but so effective and potent. And if you wanted to, you could go down your back. And then we can also do neural with the nerve rhythm as well, which I won't go into, but that's also a rhythm we can reset in our bodies because the way we've been thinking, the different blocks we've carried, all of the cool things we've been discussing today 
will knock that out of whack, will bring in a dissidence in the in the rhythms, but you can reset those and you're saying, okay, there we are. That's yeah. me. Yeah. Isn't I that love beautiful? that. Yeah. I love that. The dance, because uh, when Janine Bolin came on the show, she, she said that the first two questions she asks people when they get out of whack is when was the last time you sang and when was the last time you danced? And I thought, yeah, that was, it was so on point. Right. And one of the things as I've been thinking about the retreat that I'm designing is, uh, you know, I'm going to be designing it around the people who come so that I know what level they're at and so on. But one of the things that we're definitely going to be doing is some embodiment work because you cannot do any magic unless you're in your body. I mean, you can do magic in the astral, but you can't bring anything into form on the planet unless you are in your body. Your body is the, the conduit through which the energy runs to create it in physical reality, that it is the archaeus, right? The archaeus is the, the, the space between energetic and physical. Your body is the archaeus. We are the archaeus. And so when we, when we do that work, we have to be embodied. And so much of us spend all of our times up in our heads or for spiritual workers, we spend our times halfway out of our bodies because we don't, we're not really sure we want to be here, right? <laughs> I can't tell you how many healers and, and psychics and mediums and whatever I've talked to who are half out of their body because they're like, oh, I really kind of like it up there. I'm like, yes, but you chose to be here. So how about being here, right? Yeah, bring it back down, bring it back down. Yeah, there was um, a friend of mine went to a conference years ago and I told this story oh, years ago, probably the first year of the, the podcast. He went to a conference and he watched a guy and I wish I knew the guy's name. I don't. Um, and he, the guy said, you know, I went and studied with the mystics in Tibet and the shamans in Peru. You want to know the difference between a mystic and a shaman is that the mystic spends their entire life trying to get up into the ethers and stay there. And a shaman goes up into the ethers, does what they need to do, comes home and has lunch. <laughs> Like, yes, right? <laughs> like, come back to the earth, bring mm -hmm. it back, have some food, ground it in, right? Food is grounding. This is how we bring what we've done in the ethers into form on the planet. And so, you know, this is why Great. we do shamanism here and not mysticism. So, um, but yeah, bring, so bring this it is, home. Yes, bring it bring. home, bring it home, baby. So, this is amazing. How do people find you? You can find me at JanelleRay.com. That's my and website. R-A-E. Yeah. J-A-N-E-L-L-R-A-E.com. And, or you can email me at Janelle at JanelleRay.com. So either way, love to hear from you. Excited to hear your feedback or thoughts or questions. Um, and, but yeah, your, was, and your YouTube channel is Table it, Talk. It, yeah. It's at Janelle Working Team. So we can pr print that out somewhere for somebody. Yeah, it'll be on the show a whole notes. Lot of, whole lot of spelling happening right there. Every yeah. letter in the alphabet, but Z, and you'll have it all right. <laughs> yeah. So your, your podcast or your YouTube channel is about, tell people. It's about um, healing, discovering yourself, different gifts. I love to get people's stories. I do um, a lot of healers stories so that what can you connect to is stories. How did that show up for that person? What's it look like here, how they discovered it so that it supports others journey and um, self-discovery and recognition. Oh my gosh, I relate to that. So that's a big part of it. And then teaching. What, what are we teaching about today? So we'll, we do a teaching piece too. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks so yeah. much for being on the show. Uh, we're going to invite you into the Spirit Sherpa by Kelly Sparta Facebook group so that if people want to reach out directly to you on Facebook, they can do that through the group. They can find you there. Um, and that means, guys, if you're not in the group, come visit the group, uh, Spirit Sherpa by Kelly Sparta. And uh, don't forget to get on the mailing list so you get informed about the retreat. You can do that by either downloading the Boundaries for Empaths program that's free on the website or by scrolling to the bottom of the page and signing up for the newsletter directly. Um, and, you know, I think that's it for this week. So, oh, Kellyism, right? We need a Kellyism. Kellyism. We need a Kellyism. <sighs> okay. So we're going to say, don't forget what you meant to say. 
<laughs> and trust that the universe will give you what you were meant to say. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There we go. That. Okay. <laughs> we will go with it. All right. Well, that's all that we have time. <laughs> that's all right. That's the, all that. Well, yeah. Well, I'm I'm screwing up the outro, so you know we're yeah, gonna go works. with it. We're gonna go with it. <laughs> yes, that is all the time that we have for this week, folks. Tune in next time when Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Jules here with Kelly Sparta and Janelle Warkington, teen, <laughs> and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, y'all. Bye. Bye.